Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and I'm up this morning with a bit of a confusion <laughs> yeah first of all I'm doing a brilliant house design team haul and then I'm going to share a personal haul and part of that personal haul I'm going to be showing you how it reacts therefore I suppose I'm giving a review and I need another coffee. Right, so first up from Brilliant House Store is a large set of ovals. And I am going to measure these in a minute. I think this kind of real deep coating on their dies might be one of their trademarks. And then we have a mini slimline. And then we have another mini slimline with stitching and apertures. And I'm holding everything in my hands, which is why I'm measuring in a minute. And then we have a lovely large stitched scallop rectangle set. And last but not least, sticking inside the bag, I'm trying to unglue it. And that is a butterfly wreath. So you've got a separate butterfly there as well. Right now, I'm just putting the bag down while I get my ruler. Right, the butterfly wreath is not a perfect circle, first of all, I will say that. Tip of butterfly to bottom is 5 inches, and then if I go outside of there and try and get a measurement, it's 4 and a quarter, so that is 5 by 4 and a quarter inches, and then that lovely big butterfly in there is a fraction over 3 inches by 2. Right, so that is the butterfly wreath, I'm going to call it. And then we've got a mini slim line, so I'm going to do the largest piece, which is seven, which to me is not so mini. And then we've got just over three and a quarter. So that is the mini slim line with the apertures. And I will measure those apertures for you. They are one and three quarters. And of course, we're doing everything in inches. Right. The next one is the plain mini slim line. And we're looking at six and three quarters there. Or should, no, hang on a second. Let me turn that away from the light so I can see it. Six and a half inches. And three and a quarter inches. That's for that one. And then we have huge rectangles, not rectangles, ovals. Do you see what I mean about doing things really early in the morning? I mean, what part of that looks like a rectangle? <laughs> Nothing of it does, apart from the packaging that it's sitting on. Oh, dear me, seven and three quarter inches. And then going across there. We have six and three quarter inches. And of course, these are great cut folded in half to create rocker cards or anything else because you can cut and chop and you can turn these into bags and purses. Always useful. I love shape dies. And then the scallops, which, as you know, I absolutely love scallops. There's just something really fun and cute about them. And that is seven inches, which is a lovely size by five. So you could actually cut the largest and fold it in half and make a really pretty card. Right, so that is my Brilliant House Store design team haul. Right, and I will link all of those below. Now, I'm just going to pause while I grab my personal haul. Right, so just got everything out of the envelope. So first up, I got myself a little bear, which I guess is not that apparent. Although there is a little image there and he sits on a swing. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and use my haul for Friday. And I've got mushrooms and ferns and little flowers because, of course, I was thinking about a scene. I'm thinking about cutting an aperture to put him in and then putting all of the flowers and stuff around. And that one is a bouquet or you can use the flower parts independently. So that's what I've got. And... Let me see if I can get this out of the package because the bear is really cute. It's got some really nice embossing on it. There we go. Isn't that sweet? Could even be a Christmas bear, you know, if you put a little Santa hat on him and uh, he could be sitting in his swing again. Maybe put the Christmas trees behind him. Swinging for Christmas. Why not? 
Right, so that's that bit that I got. And then the next thing that I want to show you before um, I show you my haul of stamps is my pad because I got it from Walmart. If you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I got the Walmart watercolour paper pad, uh, which is by the B Company, but this one is the mixed media. Now I'm just stretching over to grab it. Right, you don't want to throw everything on the floor. And that is what it looks like in Walmart. That's the cover that you're looking for. It's a huge pad, which is why I can't fit it all in. In fact, it gives you the dimensions there. It's 9 by 12 inches. It is a lovely quality. It's a 114 pound or 185 GSM. Now, that's not sort of like top, top quality when it comes to mixed media. Some of the heaviest weights are like the Strathmore, which can be 300 GSM. But, you know, if, if all you're doing is messing around and making a few cards and planner pages and stuff like that, um, if you intend to keep something for an awful long time, then I would say the Strathmore Mixed Media is probably the one to go for. But for fun and splashing around and stenciling and stuff, what a great price. 120 sheets. Slide that to there. And this is what it looks like. And I did do the KS Craft um, flower card yesterday with it, if you saw that. The one with the red flowers. This is what I used. It's white, but it's very slightly off-white. Almost, um, not off-white dirty, but off-white with a very slight blue tinge to it. But it is gorgeous quality for the money. $13.97 for 120 sheets so if you see that in Walmart I do advise grabbing it I grab two right now then my stamps because it kind of clashes with that and I'm stretching over the table again and I'm just going to show you my stamps and then the samples that I managed to make right first up I got this like washi tape design and you can see it's all dirty I don't clean my stamps I just don't I prime everything this stays on let it dry and then I use whatever color I want to on top of that so that's how I do my stamps and I get no pooling or anything so I usually get a good stamp every time so I've got myself that one and then if I can turn them the right way around so you can see sort of like wildflowers and butterflies and daisies and there's like two in a pack there and then I got this one because I thought one would be quite good actually for Halloween you've got those skeletons and then that one there I really like it's got the I think it's a sparrow and then you've got the Victorian sort of like plants under a cloche and then you've got that little bit of harlequin which is one of my all-time favorite patterns harlequin and then my next one is wildflowers again very mixed media and you've got the dragonfly on that one you've got lots of numbers and postal bits and pieces I just absolutely love stuff like this because you can use bits and pieces on the edge of a page or you can stamp your tag or it's big enough to make you know little pages for a book and then I had to get this one this one is the ding ding phone one absolutely love it and I love that vintage phone as well so that one is separate that one is separate and that one is a collage all on its own this one I don't think I'm likely to ever use it it's actually barbed wire and it says destroy and uh, I don't know in what context I would ever use that term in, in my crafting so I'm probably just going to rip that off and chuck it in the bin and then this one is get it the right way around this is ferns this says uh, botany and then you've got all kinds of little plants and then you've got sort of like a page which is like a plant advert see how close we can get there you go a few French words in there as well but just really really sweet I love them and then this one is a huge one I think this is like let me measure it 
it's like four and a half inches by four inches that's just the bird piece and then you've got the separate skeleton leaf stamp and then you've got botanical treasury and bird study so that could go on anything really if you've got um a pillowcase or something like that and you want to make a cushion for the couch or you want to stamp the front of your apron if you use one when that you're uh, wearing when you're crafting you can do stuff like that but it would also make a great little picture in a frame but I just love that so now onto my samples using the mixed media paper right and I did cut a piece actually this piece has got gesso on it. I don't know if you can see that. I just rubbed it on with my fingers and it does have a little bit of texture. And that is the clear gesso from Little Birdie, which was from my haul last week. So I've got a couple of watercolour pens and we're going to test it to see if the ink goes through uh, once it's been gessoed. And that gesso is really nice. It gives a suede-like feel to the paper. Right, first of my samples, and it's the washi strips, and I just stamp those in lots of different colours, and uh, just black the edges with some sort of black sort of distressing. So those are the washi strips, and they're nice and grungy and lovely. And then here onto that mixed media paper, I've just used Versifying Claire. So if I get close there. You can see how it stamps. That little black blotch there, that's that's my error. That's me being overzealous with my ink pads and putting the ink pads where I shouldn't have. And then you've got ferns. And if I put my finger in there, you can see, you know, they are colourable, whether you're using pencils or, or what have you. And then this one, again, just done in Versifying Claire. And that script is super, super tiny, so I would never expect to be able to read it, but you can read that piece there. Next up is the botany one, and I stamped that in a cactus green, and then I also stamped it in Versifying Claire. But if you look on the back of the paper, you can see there's a very, very slight shadow there. Had it been gessoed, which is what we're about to try, that wouldn't show up at all. And then this one, I've used watercolour and it didn't really come through. I mean, hold it up to the light and you can see the shadow, but that looked quite good. And that is watercolour just straight down onto this. You can see from the side, it did not warp the paper. So, you know, once again, showing it's a really good buy. And then on this one, I decided to use alcohol markers, which is something you shouldn't use on um, dense paper like this because it will just suck all of the ink out of your pen. If you put a coating down, then you can use your markers, but straight onto raw mixed media paper like this, it will drain the ink very quickly. But you can see the level of bleeding is not really that bad coming out of a marker. Flip it over and I use some of my um, my doodars, that's what I keep calling it, my Eileen's Jewelry Glaze doodars and I just made the daisy a little bit shiny because something like that takes a while to dry and I just wanted to see if it would walk the paper and it didn't. So really, really pleased about that, which means you can put texture sprays down onto it. And then once again, Versifying Claire, stamping those two. And I just think that's just so pretty. It really is. And then last but not least, loads of watercolour. And I did soak the paper. I mean, really soak it. And you'll see that when I flip it over. What surprises me is that it didn't have more bleed through on this section. And that's why I put a lot of watercolour paint down on there. But I just think that is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I might try and use that with my um, Brilliant House Design Team Hall tomorrow. So that's what we've got there. Now, if I just move these over to the side for a second, this bit has got the gesso on it. There you go. You can see where my fingers just rubbed it onto the paper. Now I'm going to put down a sort of like, I don't know what colour you'd call this. It's almost like a shell, shell colour. And it's going on top of the gesso. I'm not squeezing it. 
because it might take forever to dry. I'm going to try and put, there you go. I'll put a little puddle down there. And let's see what happens if I go in with another colour. These are Jane Davenport's um, mermaid markers, which are like coloured watercolour ink. And that one is supposed to be a totally different shade. And I am rubbing it into the gesso to see if it moves it. And I'm just going to drip that down there. Don't want it to go everywhere. Right. I'm going to leave that for a few seconds and pause and I'll be right back. Right, so I've quite literally left that for just 10 seconds. And you can see it sitting on top of there and it's still very wet. It will still drip, but I've got some kitchen paper. I'm just going to dab it so that I can turn it over. As you can see, it's lifted most of the colour up by dabbing it. Turn it over no warping and no bleed through so the gesso is good as well i do advise you know when you're using sort of like watercolor stuff to let it dry naturally the colors are just more intense you can see all, all my lovely color is up on here now but if you want something that's kind of like washed out in the background by all means go dabbing but clearly the gesso works and this mixed media paper I mean for three cents under fourteen dollars I think it was thirteen ninety seven for your hundred and twenty sheets I just think it's great I mean you know sideways on view no warping uh, as I say it did go through had I gessoed it it would not have gone through but just look at how much ink I put down on there I put loads on so yeah I highly recommend it right as I say been a bit of a confusing video today and uh, I should be more awake when I do stuff like this I know I should one of these days I'll get myself into trouble far more than that gingerbread lady crawling out of the gym bottle I'm sure but um, I think DIY art being will forgive me for having said that. So, as usual, have an absolutely awesome day. I am going to be up with Brilliant House Projects tomorrow. As usual, all links below. And I do thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.